Welcome back. Now, we've spent the past couple of videos finding Taylor series expansions for a couple of our functions, like e to the x, sine x, and cosine x. And we found that they can be represented with these infinitely long polynomials. Now, you may still have trouble, like, thinking in your mind that this really, really long infinite polynomial actually is this function e to the x. And that's what we're going to do in this video. We're really going to stress out that these two are indeed equal. We can say that this Taylor series converges to e to the x, or we can say that this e to the x is represented by this Taylor series, but in the end we just really want to show that these two are indeed equal, and we're going to do that in a particular way. So let's first start off with e to the x. We're just going to rewrite it down here, so e to the x is equal to 1 plus x plus x squared over 2 factorial plus x cubed over 3 factorial plus x to the fourth over 4 factorial and it goes all the way up to infinity. Now, here's what we're going to do. Let's take the derivative of both sides. So let's just first start off by taking the derivative of this enormous polynomial here. Let's, and the way we can do this is we're just going to take the derivative term by term. So derivative of 1, that's just 0. Derivative with respect to x of x is just 1. Derivative of x squared, that's 2x, and that's over 2 factorial. Plus the derivative of x cubed is 3x squared, and that's over 3 factorial. Plus 4x cubed over 4 factorial, and so on. Now let's try and simplify this up a bit. Let's just drop the zero term, so we have 1 plus... Now, let's take a look at the factorial. We know that 2 factorial is just 2 times 1. Which means that this t we can say that this 2 in the numerator will cancel with this 2 in the denominator. So we're just left with x over 1, or x over 1 factorial. Now, let's try and see if we can do that with the next term. We know that 3 factorial that's 3 times 2 times 1. So this 3 in the numerator will cancel with the 3 in the, in the denominator, and we're left with x squared over 2 times 1, which is just 2 factorial. And then we can do the same here. This 4 factorial, that's 4 times 3 times 2 times 1. So the 4s will cancel, and we have x cubed over 3 times 2 times 1, which is just 3 factorial, and it goes on and on. And look what we're left with. We're left with 1 plus x plus x cubed over 2 factorial plus x, sorry, x squared over 2 factorial plus x cubed over 3 factorial and so on. Which was exactly what we started with. The derivative of this power series or the derivative of this polynomial is itself. In the same exact way that the derivative of e to the x is e to the x. So we're able to show just by taking the derivatives that these two have, they have the same derivative. The derivative of each of, of each of these sides is itself. Just as like an extra way to really emphasize that this infinitely long polynomial is e to the x. Now let's see if that works with our sine and cosine. So let's just rewrite the sine expression. We know that, oops, sine of x that's just x minus x cubed over 3 factorial plus x to the 5th over 5 factorial minus x to the 7th over 7 factorial and so on. Now I'll do one more time. x to the 9th over 9 factorial minus and so on. Now let's do the same thing we did in the last video. Let's take the derivative term by term of this power series. So, the derivative of x, with respect to x, that's just 1. Minus derivative of x cubed, that's just 3x squared over 3 factorial. Plus derivative of x to the fifth is 5x to the fourth over 5 factorial. Minus 7x to the sixth over, oops, 7 factorial. Plus 9x to the eighth over 9 factorial, and so on. And we can do the same exact thing we, we did in, uh, for e to the x. We can simplify the by 
canceling the term that's in the numerator with one of the, those terms in the denominator, and we're going to get that this is going to be equal to 1 minus 3 will cancel with the first 3, and we're left with x uh, squared over 2 factorial plus 5 factorial, that's 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 times 1, so one of the 5 terms will cancel, and we're left with x to the 4th over 4 factorial minus x to the 6th over 6 factorial plus x to the 8th over 8 factorial, and so on. Now this is interesting. When we took the derivative, all of our odd terms, like our x to the 1st, x to the 3rd, x to the 5th, became even x to the 0, x squared, x to the 4th, x to the 6th. But we've seen this power series before. We know that, well, if you remember, this power series, or Taylor series, is the Taylor series for cosine of x. So this is equal to cosine of x. So we can say that the derivative of the Taylor series that represents sine of x is equal to the Taylor series that represents cosine x, in the same way that the derivative of sine x is cosine x. Now just to really, really drive this point home, let's take the derivative of this power series and see what we get. So the derivative of 1, that's just 0, and our derivative of negative x squared is just going to be negative 2x over 2 factorial plus derivative of x to the fourth, that's 4x cubed over 4 factorial minus 6x to the fifth over 6 factorial plus 8x to the seventh over 8 factorial and so on. And like before we can cancel out some of the terms on the top and bottom and we're going to be left with negative x plus x cubed over 3 factorial minus x to the fifth over 5 factorial plus x to the seventh over 7 factorial and so on. Now just to really, really make this clear, let's just factor out a negative 1 term. So we have negative 1 times x minus x cubed over 3 factorial plus x to the 5th over 5 factorial minus x to the 7th over 7 factorial, and so on. Now what are we left with? We're left with negative 1 times this power series right here. But we know what that Taylor series is, that's just the Taylor series for sine of x. So we found that, whoops, let's just write that out here, that is equal to negative times sine of x. So we found that the derivative of this Taylor series right here gives us this Taylor series, in the same way that the derivative of cosine gives us negative sine. So there we have it. We're able to show that the original Taylor series expansions for each of our functions have the same derivatives and if you want you can do it out you'll find that they have the same integrals as our the functions that they converge to which is just another way of just saying that these two things are indeed equal it's just another way of showing that I should say so was that I'll hopefully see you in the next video